Okay, let's take a look at this sample problem 4.1. Classify each of the following compounds as a non-electrolyte, a weak electrolyte, or a strong electrolyte. A is methanol, which has a chemical formula CH3OH. B is sodium hydroxide, which has a chemical formula NaOH. C is ethyl amine, which has a chemical formula C2H5NH2. And D is hydrofluoric acid, which has a chemical formula, HF. Now, in this particular problem, we're talking about electrolytes. And electrolytes are substances that conduct electricity. So a wire conducts electricity, right? Electrolytes are substances that when you dissolve them, they conduct electricity. So for example, it turns out if you take pure water, it doesn't have anything dissolved in it, it will not conduct electricity. But if you dissolve salts into it, it will conduct electricity. The electrolytes conduct electricity. So salts are a good example of this. So if you have a substance which is what we say, what we call ionic, an ionic substance, it will form electrolytes which will conduct electricity. So for example, if we have something like the sodium ion, that is an ion and it conducts electricity. The same is true for anions. For example, the chloride ion, it will also conduct electricity. So one of the tricks here that when you're doing these sorts of problems is really just identifying what type of substance you have. So really what they have here are a few categories. One category are what we call ionic. Ionic compounds. Ionic compounds do tend to form ions, and ions are electrolytes. They conduct electricity. So when you look at B, sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound. How do we know it's an ionic compound? If it has a metal, it most likely is. This is a nonmetal here, right? The hydroxide's a nonmetal. So be familiar with the periodic table. Be familiar in terms of identifying which substances are metals and which substances are nonmetals. Okay? Sodium is a metal, so this compound is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds generally form strong electrolytes. That's the reasoning here. Okay, metal means ionic, which means strong electrolytes. That's the logic that we're using here. Now it turns out this logic is just wrong, but that's, this is the introduction to this topic, so we can't make it too complex for you. We can only give you the most simplest uh, understanding of how this is going to work. As we go to the next sections, we'll get a little bit more complicated about it. So if it has a metal, it is an ionic compound, and if it's an ionic compound, it forms strong electrolytes. Okay, so let's take a look at the next category, which are what we call weak acids and weak bases. Okay, weak acids and weak bases. Now we're going to talk more in detail when we get to the future sections on acids and bases in terms of what they are. But for right now, weak acids would be substances such as HF, HCN, HC2H3O2. Those are three examples of what we call weak acids. We're not even going to go into detail what they are, but notice the pattern with them. 
they have a hydrogen atom and then nonmetal. So this one's called hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid. This one's called hydrogen cyanide or hydrocyanic acid. And this one's called acetic acid. Oops. Okay, so these substances, which we call weak acids, it turns out they conduct electricity just a little bit. They do not conduct electricity in a great manner, not like ionic compounds when they're dissolved in water, but if you dissolve these substances into water, they will conduct electricity a little bit, and therefore we call them weak electrolytes. Okay, so these are weak electrolytes. Okay. Now, there are other substances which we call weak bases. Okay. Now, what are the weak bases? These are tricky. These are the bases. These are the substances. I'm going to list them for you. NH3, that's called ammonia. CH3, NH2. And then C2H5, NH2. So notice they all have NH. If it has NH in it, it's most likely a weak base. So I'm just going to put in parentheses NH, if it has NH in it. Now, weak bases are analogous to weak acids. They also form weak electrolytes. Okay, Weak electrolytes meaning that they form some ions in water, but not very many, so they conduct electricity just a little bit. So we call them weak electrolytes. So looking at the categories, or looking at our options here, take a look. If you look at C, ethylamine, and you look at D, hydrofluoric acid, they're in those categories, right? So C and D, C is ethylamine. and D is HF. Weak acid, weak base. Okay, therefore weak electrolytes. Meaning they do not conduct electricity very well but they will conduct it a little bit. Okay, so that's the second category, weak acids and weak bases. Now we move on to our third category. Let me make a little room here for us. Our third category, oops, are what we call molecular substances. Molecular compounds, molecular substances, these ones are non-electrolytes. They do not conduct electricity. Okay? They're non-conductive when you put them into water. Examples of these Water itself is a molecular substance. Alcohols are substances. Sugars. Those are generally the three categories that people are going to look at. So what's an alcohol? An alcohol is a substance which has a carbon atom attached to an OH group. So here's an example. This one's called methanol. Here's another substance. This one's called ethanol. Okay, those are alcohols. Alcohols, when you dissolve them in water, and alcohols do dissolve in water pretty well. Many of them do. Certainly methanol and ethanol do. They dissolve in water, but they do not conduct electricity. They do not form ions. So alcohols are non-conductive. They're non-electrolytes. Also sugars. So we've seen um, from chapter 3 there's something called glucose. Here's another one. Sucrose. Okay. 
glucose, sucrose. Sugars do not conduct electricity. They are molecular substances. They are non-electrolytes. So our third category, molecular substances, would be water itself, for example. Alcohols, which are carbon bonded to an OH, and sugars, glucose, sucrose, galactose, lactose, all these sugars you've heard of, those are all molecular substances and they are non-conductive. So let me just sum this up. Ionic, strong electrolytes. Weak acids, weak bases, weak electrolytes. Molecular, non-electrolytes. Okay? So remember, the ionic substances, those are the ones that have a metal with a non-metal. The weak acids and weak bases, those are the ones that have the hydrogen attached to a non-metal. Those are the weak acids. The weak bases are the ones that have a nitrogen attached to a hydrogen. Those are weak electrolytes. And then molecular substances would be water, alcohols, and sugars. Those are non-electrolytes. Okay. The term electrolyte is used to refer to electricity. Right? So there you go.